A few years after the initial release of the Xbox, Microsoft really seemed to have noticed that having interesting and unique exclusives gave players major motivation to purchase their console. Obviously, Xbox was driven by the huge success that Halo was and Halo 2 would be in 2004, as it took a genre that was already pretty popular in first-person shooters and refined it and changed it up in a way that brought players to a platform that didn't have the typical brand recognition recognition that you'd be familiar with and made these people Xbox players. And it was pretty clear that the Xbox team would want to expand its horizons when trying to reinvent a genre that's already popular and add a ton of unique experiences that will bring players onto the platform to play this game. And thus, in 2004, Fable was born. While we haven't seen a new entry in the Fable series in quite a long time, there's rumors flying around that Fable 4 could be on its way. So we thought what better type of video to release for today than looking back at the Fable series and looking at the evolution and legacy that Fable has created over the years. Let's get into it. By 2004, there already were other fantasy RPG games that had been released, and Big Blue Box Studios set out to develop a fantasy world that mixed elements of RPG games and action games together. And while Fable wasn't the first action RPG game we've ever seen, taking on the elements of being able to customize your character and then follow through how your character will turn out based off of what quests you go on and what options you choose when you play through the game ended up being a huge selling point that would be of interest for players. Being able to make your player good or evil just based off of your in-game decisions was something pretty revolutionary for 2004 standards. And while the developers were working on Albion and making this world feel alive, they definitely drew a ton of inspiration from the stereotypical medieval fantasy design that was pretty common in The Elder Scrolls or even The Lord of the Rings. But in choosing to use a very popular foundation already, this allowed for an easily accessible game for a new fan base to come in, and it let the developers really grow the world out and fill it with a ton of just interesting and unique set pieces rather than trying to spend their time and resources in making some sort of new atmosphere. They tied this great design together with a bright, colorful palette that not only highlighted the interesting features that the land had, but also made this game stand out artistically over other games that would have been its competitors. And while this game follows the standard RPG format of going on quests, the way each individual quest and the way you may complete each quest and interact with other characters along the way completely impacts the outcome of the game. For a game released in 2004, the game actually had a pretty decent combative system with various weapons you could use and magic abilities to fight against various monsters and enemies. But one of the greatest features of obviously that went into Fable was just how alive the world actually felt, where you could overhear townsfolk talking about you and just seeing how people interacted with you differently based on how you completed your quests and how you talked to other characters was a really unique take on just building up this immersive world that players could jump into. And with Fable becoming a commercial success, it actually received an expansion in the form of Fable The Lost Chapters, which added new weapons, areas, and enemies to the game. It also added a continued and expanded storyline taking place after the events of the first Fable game, which was cool for an epilogue-like story. And this was a really big deal back in 2004 because for the most part, expansion packs and DLC weren't something you really saw on consoles. And while this was also a PC game, it was really interesting just the fact that you could get an expansion version of the game if you were an Xbox owner. A year after the release of The Lost Chapters, it was announced that Fable 2 was in development, and in 2008, Fable 2 was released, and in every way that Fable innovated in its uniqueness, Fable 2 took all of those concepts that worked so well and just really expanded on trying to make the game world feel more alive than anything that had been done in the genre as a whole. Fable 2 takes place 500 years after the events of the first Fable game, and the world of Albion actually looks significantly different, having more of an Enlightenment era vibe to 
to it, with a ton of castles and places where cities used to be, and overall you can just tell technology has evolved in this in-game world. They really expanded on the concept of how your interactions in the game are reflected on your character, and now your influences in the game would have major influence on how your character looked, to the point where even if you leveled up certain features on your character, there would be some sort of resemblance shown in the avatar as well. They also added the ability to have families in this game, which was a really unique take from a RPG type game, and you could have a dog, which followed you at all times and would also reflect whether you were good or bad or more neutral. And while Albion was a very pretty world, the game still remained pretty linear like the first game, however, just the way that they added these new features let the game feel more alive and allowed you to really get sidetracked with other little projects along the way because of just everything that this game had to offer. You could also play as a female character if that's what you wanted, and co-op was added into this game, which for games in this genre, it's something that's not very commonly seen, and it was really cool. It even had local co-op, which was something that you never saw from a game in this genre, and it's not really something you even see nowadays, and that's kind of neat. Fable 2 would go on to also receive some DLCs, even though they weren't really that expansive in the way that the Lost Chapters were in accordance to the first Fable game, but it was still cool just to have the few extra things added in, and for the most part, if people got the game later on as the Game of the Year edition, it would include the DLCs. One thing that was really interesting though was right before the release of Fable 2, they released a spin-off game called Fable 2 Pub Games, which would allow you to play through three different mini-games that would give you the opportunity to earn gold that you could then transfer to your Fable 2 character. Fable 3 would release just two years after the release of Fable 2, and while this game didn't really have as much of a development time as Fable 2 had, this game really stepped up the bar as how Fable played and felt. We did see another time jump, this time of only 50 years, and you could see that the world was beginning to enter more of an industrial age. Albion really looked defined, and for 2010 standards, it looked the best that it had ever looked in any game before. The game continued the trend of having your character morph based off of your in-game decisions, and now your weapons would actually reflect the same things that your character would reflect in previous Fable games. If you killed a bunch of skeletons, your weapon could begin to look like a skeleton. If you killed a bunch of innocent people, your sword might drip blood. It was just really cool how they just continued to grow this feature in this entry. While most of Fable 3 actually played pretty closely to Fable 2 in just how you pursued quests, there was some really cool developments made where you would become the ruler of Albion, allowing you to make some serious decisions as to what would end up happening. You could be a good ruler or an evil ruler, and it just added this whole extra layer. It's just a shame that this part was kind of introduced in the later half of the game rather than being an option in the early forefront. At the very least though, it was really cool once you got to the point where you could start to make these decisions that would be reflected far beyond just how your own character looked, but would now affect the entire world. And Fable 3 did keep up the trend of making the worlds feel alive and almost had their own personality now at this point associated with the art style. It wasn't gritty like other competitors and it was more lighthearted and almost humorous at times. And even despite Fable 3 maybe not being as well received as Fable 2, there still was a really dedicated fan base that loved this game and just loved immersing themselves into its world. Also during this time where Fable 3 was released, Microsoft was also trying to get people to purchase their Windows phone. It was really weird how they tried to convince gamers to buy these phones, but if you remember back in the day, Halo Spartan Assault came out on Windows phones exclusively, and in 2010, they released Fable Coin Golf onto Windows phones, which essentially was a golf game that allowed you to transfer the coins that were earned to your character in Fable 3. In 2012, we would receive the next major Fable game in Fable The Journey, which would release on the Xbox 360 exclusively for the Kinect. Now obviously it seems really weird that they would just jump onto a Kinect only game, but it was pretty clear at this point that Microsoft needed some sort of massive exclusive game for Kinect that would get people to purchase the thing, and Fable probably being their second biggest exclusive made the most sense for them to do it. And while as far as Kinect 
liked games go, Fable The Journey actually is probably the closest game that resembles an actual playable game for Kinect. It was a massive departure from what had made Fable so successful in the past, which was just being able to create your own character and experience the world of Albion. But instead, this game ends up being an on-rails game where you mostly ride a horse and then occasionally you do hand gestures to cast spells against enemies. It's as accurate as the Xbox Kinect can be, which is like sometimes accurate, but one of the strongest parts of this game actually was the story, which kept the same type of feel from what you would see in the previous Fable games intact, and at least that was nice for the people who paid the money to get this game, even though the gameplay itself wasn't all that great. During this time, they also did another tie-in with an Xbox 360 arcade game in Fable Heroes, which would be a hack and slash beat em up game that would allow you to earn several different items, which would be transferable into your Fable The Journey game. Out of all of the tie-in games, this one resembled an actual game the most, as it allowed for four-player co-op, and it also had some mini-games with it. After Lionhead Studios concluded their development of Fable The Journey, they began development on what would have been one of the biggest undertakings they have ever done for the Fable series, which would have been Fable Legends. This game was intended to serve as a prequel to the original Fable trilogy, and would tie elements of the main Fable games into this new game that would focus in on four-player cooperative experiences. It looked like this game really mixed a lot of elements that were popular in MMORPGs, along with some of the action and RPG styles commonly found in Fable. Several trailers for this game were released, and the game even went into a limited public beta period where a ton of people were able to experience the first section of the game. Unfortunately though, Microsoft shut down Lionhead Studios in March of 2015, and the game was cancelled at that point, which turned out to be a huge shock to the people and employees of Lionhead Studios, who never thought that the game would be outright cancelled, and at the very least thought that even if Fable Legends was not successful, they'd be able to repurpose the game to develop Fable 4. Fable Legends was originally intended to be supported for five years and have different characters that players would be able to purchase and have different experiences as they went through the game with their friends. And while it's rumored that there was some serious management issues at Lionhead Studios that caused for this whole thing to be shut down, it's still a shame we never got to see this game that was practically finished and ready for release in just about three to four months when it was scheduled to go public. And just prior to all of Lionhead Studios being shut down, they also began development on a Fable card game that they hoped to release sometime in the future. They had a ton of art already made for it, and it was something that they were already actively developing at the time Lionhead closed down. Fortunately, some of the employees got together and opened up a new studio called Flaming Fowl Studios, and Microsoft actually came and offered the Fable license to the studio so that they could finish up the card game. They went ahead and did a Kickstarter campaign looking to raise £250,000 for the game's development, and unfortunately the crowdfunding for this project also failed. However, they were able to find private funding to finish up this game, and it did see an actual release in February of 2018, and it was still received poorly by fans and critics alike, just because it was such a departure from Fable, it had a free-to-play model, and it just had been so long since we've seen a real Fable game that people just didn't care. In 2018, however, rumors began to circulate that Playground Games had been given the assignment of developing Fable 4. Now, Phil Spencer has commented that Microsoft will not be making any official announcements towards Fable 4 until there is something solidified to announce in an actual release window, probably because they don't want to announce Fable 4 and then have another game get cancelled in the way that Fable Legends had. But it's almost nearly confirmed that development on Fable 4 is currently ongoing. While Playground Games is really only known for the Forza Horizon games, it looks like if Microsoft plans to be bringing Fable back, they're going to be pulling all the stops and making something that is fresh while also paying respects to the legacy that the Fable trilogy had originally created back in the day. And while there's a ton of rumors and speculation out there that this new Fable game will take place on different planets and have a destroyed Albion, there's still a lot of 
questions as to what routes they're willing to go with this new game. But either way, we have to be able to respect the legacy that Fable has created over the years and just the great experiences that players have been able to have from these games. But that being said, we wanted to turn this around to you guys. What was your favorite Fable game? Personally, I really loved Fable 2. It got me into the series and I just loved how it hooks you really early on into the world. But let us know what you're thinking down below. For more videos like this, we really focus here on just the best and greatest games from Xbox and the glory days of Xbox and all things like that. So if you like that type of stuff, if you would be willing to subscribe with notifications on, you'll get more content just like this. But we'll see you all next time with a brand new video.